what is up guys my name is lex welcome back to the vlog we are here at seminal hard rock in hollywood florida getting ready to play a 510 no limit session make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of the video where i go over my decision to not play on hustler casino live i was scheduled for an august 31st 2550 game but i decided to back out and at the end of this video i'm gonna let you guys know the reasons why no time to get comfortable and settle in. Our very first hand we are dealt in. Pocket deuces under the gun. I raised to $30. We're seven handed. The cutoff calls 30, button calls 30, and the big blind calls 30 as well. So we're four ways. First flop here at the hard rock, and it comes out five, nine, deuce, rainbow. Flopping bottom set. Pretty amazing board because one, we have bottom set. We don't block our opponents from having two pairs or top pair holdings and we're multi-way. We should be getting some action here. I continue for a $50 bet. The cutoff calls $50, the button calls $50 and the big blind folds. So now down to three handed and the turn is a six of clubs. I get a little tricky here and decide to check with hopes of check raising on this board. I'm hoping that this six potentially could have helped someone to maybe two pair or if one of my opponents has a top pair holding or maybe an over pair like pocket tens, they'll put out a bet and I can put in a check raise trying to build this pot up. The cutoff player does put out a bet. He makes it $100 and when the button player calls, our check raise dreams are coming true here. I decide to bump it up to $375. The only bad thing about this check raise is that I'm really never going to be bluffing here. So if I was playing against very competent players, they could hero fold their over pairs or their one pair holdings. But against these particular opponents, I'm just trying to go for the max against their one pairs, their two pairs, or their pair plus straight draws. The cutoff player makes it very easy for me when he decides all of his money is going in there. He ships it all in for about $1,000 and now the button asks for a count. So she is interested here. She wants to know how much it is. I don't know what I will do if the button ends up calling. I'm pretty sure I'm ahead of the button. She could have slow played a set on the flop or potentially slow played a straight on the turn. But either way, if she calls a thousand, I think we're just going to have to ship it all in there. However, she folds and we make a very quick call. We are all in heads up a massive pot with bottom set. The river card is an eight bringing a one liner straight now to any seven. And I announce I have a set and show my pocket deuces and my opponent shows seven, eight for a straight. And our set is cracked. Our first hit, nope, just kidding guys. He shows five, six for two pair and we end up winning this one. Had to throw in that little joke there. I've been running so bad this last two months that I was waiting for him to show me a seven for a straight, but not this time. Our set holds up against two pair. We end up taking down a large pot, our very first hand here at the Hard Rock. We're in the game for $2,500 and our stack is now at $3,600. I switch over to seat number seven, a better viewpoint for the vlog and get into a hand here where there's a limp for $10. The cutoff raises to $35 and with ace queen suited on the button, seems like a hand I think I could be raising it up here with. Sometimes I would flat call looking to play multi-way with some weaker players, but this time I decided to raise it up here to 125 bucks. The action folds back over to the cutoff player who seems fairly aggressive. He's got about $1,200 in his stack and he throws out a four bet to around $500. Over the last week, I've seen this guy 4-bet a ton of the time, so with Ace-Queen suited for only $1,200, cutoff versus button, I decide to just rip it all in, and he makes the snap call, so we're all in again. Our second hand here at the Hard Rock, the flop comes out, 10, 5, deuce, 2 clubs, turn 6, river 7 of clubs, a terrible board for Ace-Queen of hearts, but after I show my hand, he tells me Ace-High is good, and he folds. Somehow in a 5-bet jam, all-in pre-flop on a 10-high board, Ace-Queen of Hearts is the best hand to scoop down over a $2,000 pot. Not gonna lie to you guys, when I saw the run out with my particular hand, all-in pre-flop, I was 98% sure our chips were not gonna come back in our direction, so I am very pleasantly surprised that we win this one, and now our stack is up over $4,500. Profiting 2k in just about an hour of playing. This next hand is an interesting one where live tells come into handy here. There's a $25 straddle on the button. The small blind calls 25, the big blind calls 25, and with ace four of diamonds in middle position, I elect to call, which is a very passive route, but the small blind and the big blind have very short stacks, and because the straddle is on, I don't feel like our hand is strong enough to raise, and it's too strong to fold, so I elect to call, and the button makes the call as well. 
Flop comes out 8-7-7 seven, seven with two diamonds. We flopped a nut flush draw, but when the big blind saw the flop of 7-7-8, seven, seven, two diamonds, he made a very exaggerated check motion you can see here in front of me, and he looked very excited to see the board. So I decided to check my nut flush draw and the button checks behind. The turn card is an ace, now giving me top pair. Small blind checks, and now the guy who looked very interested on the flop bets out $100. So my read on this guy is that he gave off a tell that he was super excited about seeing the flop and now by betting out $100 on this ace, I feel like he just always has trip sevens here or maybe even a full house, but our hand is way too strong to fold. We gotta see the river. We're heads up now to the deuce of clubs. We do completely miss. I'm hoping he checks over to me so we can check this one back, but that doesn't happen. He now goes into a full on Hollywood acting job you can't see his face right now, but he looks miserable. He's putting his hand on his head. He's shaking his head as if he hates the river and doesn't know what to do. And then he bets $600. If you're ever playing with an opponent and they are portraying that they are super weak, they're looking miserable at the board run out and they're acting as if they don't know what to do. And then they throw out a $600 over bet on the river. You should run. Get out of the hand right away. That person is never bluffing. In this situation, I don't think our ace is any good and we make a pretty easy fold. But in this situation, I'm just glad that I happened to notice his reaction when he saw the flop and that I was able to notice his reaction or his Hollywooding there on the river. Because if I didn't see all that, I may be tempted to hero call with an ace just because his hand wouldn't make too much sense. But we end up making the fold here and moving on to the next hand. There's no straddle on in this hand, but there's an early position raise to $60. With pocket queens in middle position, I re-raised to $175. I'm not sure what to think about this 6x raise from early position, but when the flop comes out, queen, 7-3, all diamonds, flopping top set. I don't really think about that pre-flop action anymore. All I'm thinking about is, yes, we have a good hand, and my opponent leads into me now for $75. So we three bet pre-flop, flop top set, and now our opponent leads into us for 75 bucks. I think a raise is in store here. He only has about $1,000 left in his stack, so I bump it up here to 300 bucks. Basically, I'm just trying to get it all in here. If he does have a hand like ace queen with the ace of diamonds, maybe ace king with the ace of diamonds, I think we can get it all in or at least charge him with those drawing hands. Considering that I have two queens in my hand and there's one on the board, I actually don't think he's going to have a top pair holding very often, so I don't really know what he's leading out here on the flop, but I'm just going to play my hand face up. I got a set. Let's raise. He ends up making the call for $300, and we're going to the turn, which is the king of hearts. Now, of course, we are losing now to pocket kings, but if he has that hand, it's just a cooler. When he checks over to me with only $700 left in his stack, I decide to just rip it all in. We don't get snap called right away, which is great. We're all in for the third time this session and we most likely have the best hand. If he did have a flush or a set of kings, he would just be snap calling this bet. So given the fact that he is in the tank, I'm almost positive we are in the lead here. We're looking for a call now and he goes into the tank for over a minute and a half. He's thinking this one over and eventually he decides to let this one go. We take down another one and our stack is up over $5,000 now, profiting 3K so far in the session. After two months of bad beats and negative variants taking a hold on my bankroll, it feels good to win some pots, getting some chips shipped in our direction. In this hand, I call a hijack raise with pocket nines and we're three ways to a 10-4 deuce flop. Making second pair, I check, initial raiser and the hijack decides to check and now the cutoff checks as well. The turn card is the deuce of clubs. Given the fact that nobody bet on the flop, I do feel like our hand is best, but I decide to check again out of position. Now the hijack player who initially raised pre-flop and then checked this 10 high board throws out a bet of $200. Cutoff player folds and with the action back on us, I do feel like we have to defend here. So I decide to make the call. Going to the river, which is the queen of spades. I check over to him and he leads out again for $350. Kind of an annoying spot here. I was pretty sure we had the best hand on the turn, but now we are losing to any Queen X of hearts or Queen X of clubs. Because my opponent didn't bet the flop, I don't expect him to have a 10X hand very often, but he could have been slow playing. Maybe he flopped a set. Possibly he flopped a weak 10 and he was pot controlling. Maybe he has a hand like aces and he was slow playing. 
In these kind of situations, sometimes I would just flick in the call when his hand doesn't make too much sense, but I'm really trying to not hero call as much when my opponents are probably never bluffing. Given the fact that he bet into two people on the turn, seems fairly strong, and then now when he bets this $350 sizing on the river, I just feel like our hand is not very good that often. Maybe he's turning a hand like pocket sixes or sevens into a bluff, maybe a hand like ace king of hearts, but I can't find that many hands that he would be bluffing with for this sizing, so I decide to let this one go. He doesn't show, so we'll never know. Over the next two hours, I really can't seem to win any hands here. My stack goes from $5,500 to around $4,000, losing around $1,500 just from missing flops, seabetting, betting or losing small ones. Leading into this last hand of the night here where the button opens to $25, I have pocket tens in the small blind. Button versus small blind pocket tens should be way ahead of his opening range, so I three bet to $75. The big blind comes along with a cold call, of $75 and the button calls as well. Three ways in a three bet pot and we flop another set. Jack, 10, four, rainbow. Given the fact that there's around $225 in the middle, I decide to bet $100, which I think is a mistake. I do think I could go a little bit bigger on this board considering that any straight draw, any jack or any over pair is gonna be calling a much bigger bet. But I decide to go with a $100 bet and now the big blind who cold called my three bet raises me to 275 bucks the button gets out of the way and now the action's back over on me we have the second nuts in a three bet pot we bet the flop and get raised to 275 dollars my opponent in the big blind has around 900 dollars left so i feel like he's just always committed in this situation i don't think he's ever going to be raising a hand that he's going to be folding to any re-raise by me let's say i call 275 and he has a hand like ace jack and the turns a king a queen or a 10, it might slow him down and he might check back the turn. Maybe he's doing this as a semi-bluff with a hand like king-queen or 8-9 suited. In this situation, I think calling is fine and I also think raising all in is fine as well. Given the fact that we do have middle set and we don't block him from having top pair holdings, I think an all in would be a better play. And also, if I rip it all in here, it may even look more bluffy than if I just call and he checks the turn and I rip it all in on the river. So I decide to go with option B and put him all in. He's got about $900 left. It's a three bet pot. If he has top pair, a straight draw, or maybe even a slow played over pair pre-flop, I don't think he's ever gonna be folding. The problem I see with slow playing in this spot is that we're gonna be out of position for the duration of the hand. Let's say he's doing this $275 raise as a blocker bet, basically just to see where he's at. He can check back any turn and realize all of his equity there on the river. I feel like the best play in a three bet pot holding middle set with my opponent's stack size is to just rip it all in, get all the money in while we're ahead and before any scary card comes out. After weighing out his options for almost two minutes, my opponent eventually gives his cards back to the dealer and we take another one down. He then asked me what I had and I told him, I'll tell you what I had if you tell me what you had. He said he had pocket nines, which I'm not sure if he's joking or trolling, but it makes sense he would cold call that pre-flop. I guess on the flop, he put me on a hand like ace king and he was putting out a blocker bet, but either way, we take another pot down, running good today. Chips being pushed in our direction. We end up profiting over $2,100 on the session. All right, so why I decided to not play on Hustle Casino Live on August 31st. I was scheduled for a 25-50 game August 31st out in Los Angeles, California. And before I get into this, I wanna make a statement that my decision to not play on Hustle Casino Live on August 31st has nothing to do negatively with Hustler Casino or Hustler Casino Live. I have always had positive interactions with both companies. Hustler Casino, I did a meetup game there back in January and it was great. The staff was awesome, super accommodating. I also just recently played on Max Payne Monday at 1020 game back in June and it was probably one of the best poker experiences I've really ever had in my entire life. The staff was super professional. The production quality was amazing. The game was great and it was just a ton of fun. So you may be wondering then, why are you not gonna be playing on August 31st? And I'll give you guys a little bit of information on that. So in early August, I texted Ryan Feldman, who is the co-owner of Hustler Casino Live, and I'm pretty sure he puts together all the lineups. 
I asked him if there was any open seats for the Max Payne Monday 1020 stream that goes on every single Monday. This is the same game that I played back in June that I had a great time in. He told me that the game was full and he couldn't get me into that game for that time period, but he could get me into a Wednesday 2550 game. Now, if you guys are familiar with my videos, you know that I normally play 510 sometimes 5, 10, 25, and I'll take shots of bigger games like 10, 25, maybe 10, 20, 40, or 10, 25, 50. I play games in Texas that are pretty big. I play games at Bellagio that were pretty big. So 25, 50, I knew was going to be a big game, the biggest game I've ever played in my entire life, and I was a little bit hesitant to play, but after playing these other games, 10, 20, 40, 10, 25, 50, I felt like I could do it. I felt like it wasn't gonna be that much bigger than those games, so I confirmed my seat, August 31st, and I was super excited about this. Over the last week and a half, the ex-athlete in me decided to go back and watch a little bit of tape on the players that I potentially would be playing with. One of the best things about Hustle Casino Live on their YouTube channel is that they do archive footage of all the past live streams. You can go back and you can watch all the 2550 Wednesday streams from weeks and weeks and weeks ago. So I went on their channel, I started watching the past live streams on 2550 and after a couple hours of watching I realized this 2550 game is massive. It's a huge game. It's way bigger than I expected. I thought the game was going to be a 2550 game with buy-ins of around five to twenty thousand dollars and it turns out that the hundred dollar mandatory straddle is on most of the game and sometimes the two hundred dollar straddle is on as well. So instead of 2550 it's 2550, 100, sometimes 200 Instead of the stacks being around five to $20,000 like I thought, the stacks are 20, 30, 40, 50, sometimes $100,000. So I quickly realized that my $10,000 buy-ins for this game would just be nothing. If everyone has 30, 40, $50,000 and the game is playing 25, 50, 100 or 25, 50, 100, 200, that my $10,000 buy-in would just be way too small. I wouldn't have enough money to play with, to feel comfortable as well. The game would be way bigger than I imagined and also way bigger than any other game I played in my entire life. If I play a live stream game, I wanna feel confident with the way I'm playing. I wanna feel confident with my stack size and I also wanna feel confident with the game size I'm playing as well. And if I'm playing a game that's way too big for me with only $10,000 in my stack, it's gonna handcuff me. It's gonna make me play a little bit more tight. It's gonna make me play a little bit more conservative and I do not wanna play like that. If I go on a live stream, I wanna be able to buy in deep and feel comfortable with the game. I also wanna be able to play speculative hands, get in there, put some people in tough spots and really with a $10,000 stack, if everybody else has $40,000, I can't really put too many people in tough spots. So. I decided to back out of the live stream. I'm just not quite ready to play this game yet. And I say yet because I do think I can get there with more experience, with more skills being learned, with a bigger bankroll and just more time, I do think I can get to that le level. I think I can play 25, 50, 100 one day and buy in for a lot of money and feel comfortable with the game, but I'm just not quite there yet. I also didn't feel comfortable taking investors' money or taking YouTube fans' money to play in this game if I didn't feel 100% ready to go. I didn't wanna not play my A game and then risk their money, so of course I contacted everyone who bought pieces of me and I'm refunding all their money. Big shout out to Ryan Feldman for giving me the opportunity to play in Hustler Casino Live and everyone who bought pieces of me or all the fans out there who encouraged me and gave me you know, positive vibes. Unfortunately, I won't be playing in this one, but I do think one day I'll be playing in games that big. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. I don't have to take a huge leap into a game I'm not comfortable in or that will be too big for me just yet. I can take my time, I can be patient, I can keep learning, keep, keep building up my skills and experience, and one day I do think I can get there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, I'll see ya.